The senator from Wisconsin. Mr. President, are we in a quorum, Paul? Okay. Mr. President, I ask unanimous consent that Beckett, Jackson, uh, Ross, Schulman, and Alex Tosanovich, uh, interns in my Judiciary Committee office, be granted floor privileges for the remainder of the Senate's consideration of the FISA Amendments Act. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. President. And, Mr. President, I ask that the time uh, that I consume be allocated to the Dodd Amendment. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I strongly support Senator Dodd's amendment to strike the immunity provision from this bill. And I want to especially thank the Senator from Connecticut for his leadership on this issue. Both earlier this year when the Senate first considered FISA legislation, and again this time around, he has demonstrated tremendous resolve in this issue, and I've been proud to work with him. Mr. President, some have tried to suggest that the bill before us will leave it up to the courts to, to decide whether or not to give retroactive immunity to the companies uh, that allegedly participated in the President's illegal wiretapping program. But, Mr. President, make no mistake, this bill will result in immunity being granted. It will. Because it sets up a rigged process with only one possible outcome. Under the terms of this bill, a federal district court would evaluate whether there is a sub is substantial evidence that a company received, quote, a written request or directive from the Attorney General or the head of an element of the intelligence community indicating that the activity was authorized by the President and determined to be lawful, unquote. Mr. President, we already know from the report of the Senate Intelligence Committee that was issued last fall that the companies received exactly such a request or directive. So this is already public information. So under the terms of this proposal, the court's decision would actually be uh, predetermined. As a practical matter, that means that regardless of how much information the court is permitted to review, what standard of review is employed, how open the proceedings are, and what role the plaintiffs are permitted to play, it won't matter. It won't matter. The court will essentially be required, required to grant immunity under this bill. Now, proponents will argue that plaintiffs in the lawsuits against the companies and participate in briefing to, to the court. Now, this is true, but they're not allowed any access to any classified information. I mean, talk about fighting with both hands tied behind your back. Mr. President, the administration has restricted information about this illegal wiretapping program so much that roughly 70, 70 members of this chamber, of this chamber don't even have access to the basic facts about what happened. Can you believe that? So let's pretend that the plaintiffs will be able to participate in any meaningful way in these proceedings. Let's not pretend that it will be meaningful, in which Congress has made sure that their claims will be dismissed. This result is extremely disappointing. It is entirely unnecessary and unjustified, and it will profoundly undermine the rule of law in this country. I cannot comprehend why Congress would take this action in the waning months of an administration that has consistently shown contempt for the rule of law, perhaps most notably in the illegal warrantless wiretapping program it's set up in secret. Mr. President, we hear people argue that the telecom companies should not be penalized for allegedly taking part in this illegal program. What you don't hear, though, is that current law already provides immunity from lawsuits for companies that cooperate with the government's request for assistance as long as they receive either a court order or a certification from the Attorney General that no court order is needed and the request meets all statutory requirements. But, Mr. President, if requests are not properly document documented, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act instructs the telephone companies to refuse the government's request and does then subject them to liability if they instead decide to cooperate. When Congress passed FISA three decades ago, in the wake of the extensive, well-documented wiretapping abuses of the 1960s and 1970s, it decided that in the future, telephone companies should not simply assume that any government request for assistance to conduct electronic surveillance was appropriate. It was clear that some checks, some checks needed to be in place to prevent future abuses of this incredibly intrusive power. And that's the power to listen in on people's personal conversations. At the same time, however, Congress did not want to saddle telephone companies with the responsibility of determining whether the government's request for assistance was legitimate or not. They saw this problem. So Congress devised a good system. 
They devised a system that would take the guesswork out of it completely. Under that system, which is still in place today, the company's legal obligations and liability depend entirely on whether the government has presented the company with a court order or, again, a certification stating that certain basic requirements have been met. If the proper documentation is submitted, the company must cooperate with the request and it is, in fact, immune from liability. If the proper documentation, however, has not been submitted, the company must refuse the government's request or be subject to possible liability in the courts. This framework, which has been in place for 30 years, protects companies that comply with legitimate government requests while also protecting the privacy of Americans' communications uh, from illegitimate snooping. Granting companies that allegedly cooperated with an illegal program uh, this new form of retroactivity that is in this bill undermines the law that has been on the books for decades, a law that was designed to prevent exactly the type of abuses that allegedly occurred here. Even worse, granting retroactive immunity under these circumstances will undermine any new laws that we pass regarding government surveillance. If we want companies, Mr. President, to follow the law in the future, doesn't it, doesn't it send a terrible message? And doesn't it set a terrible precedent to give them a get-out-of-jail-free card? for allegedly ignoring the law in the past? Mr. President, just last week, a key court decision on FISA undercut one of the most popular arguments in support of immunity, and that is that we need to let the companies off the hook because the state secret privilege prevents them from defending themselves in court. Now, a federal court has now held that the state secret's privilege does not apply to claims brought under FISA. Rather, more specific evidentiary rules in FISA govern in situations like that. Now, shouldn't we let, at least let these cases proceed to see how they play out rather than trying to solve a problem that may not even exist? And that's not all, Mr. President. This immunity provision doesn't just allow telephone companies off the hook. It will also make it that much harder to get at the core issue that I've been raising since December 2005, which is that the President broke the law and should be held accountable. When these lawsuits are dismissed, we will be that much further away from an independent judicial review of this illegal program. And again, on top of all this, we're considering granting immunity when roughly 70 members of the Senate still have not been briefed on the President's wiretapping program. The vast majority of this body still does not even know what we're being asked to grant immunity for. Frankly, I have a hard time understanding how any senator can vote against this amendment without this information. So I urge my colleagues to support the amendment to strike the immunity provision from the bill, and I yield the floor.